and three. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> and three, two, one. to one of our episodes i was that's what i was trying to do i was trying to pull it up <laughs> i think it's hey everybody welcome to another episode of young black questions i am i am i am i am a young i am a young i am a young i am and i am a young black a young black young black a young black 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 equestrian 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 black equestrian equestrian black equestrian I'm a young black equestrian. I am a young black equestrian. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Young Black Equestrians with your host, Aubriana Johnson and Caitlin Gooch. Today, there's just two of us. We're not interviewing anybody today. We got through our first segment. We had like 10 interviews, you know, batched them out every week. They were there. So we decided to just catch up because a lot's been happening. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to let our people know what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> So let's get into it. Every episode, we talk about something that we're thankful for. So we'll keep that yes. and, and, and talk about that today. So did you want to go first? Yeah, yesterday was my mother's birthday. Um, so I am thankful for my mom. She's here spending the, her birthday week with us in Virginia so it was really exciting to have her here um especially because Jaquan is not here right now so this is a nice a nice uh break here and there because she's loving on her grandbabies but I'm thankful I didn't, I didn't know she was staying all week mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> nice. what are you thankful for <clears throat> I am thankful for clarity. Um, like these past few weeks have been so um, just eye opening. And like when it comes to like the advocacy that we do in the horse industry, and also when it comes to my business. It's like, okay, like I'm starting to figure out what's possible, what's, you know, what my goals truly are and who be out here lying and who be out here for real trying to help us, you know, just clarity in its entirety of life. I am so thankful for it because I was so confused before that. And now, now that I have like a certain direction that I want to go in, you know, I've really been working on mindset and stuff like that. So I just appreciate all of the work that's been done over the past few weeks to bring my vision to life and make it clear to me what I'm here for on this earth. So. Yeah, that is a great realization to come to. <laughs> <It's called> growth <laughs> yeah yes growth so uh catching the people up man on the last few weeks like what has been going on in the world of YBE a lot, a lot. 
I feel like it's always going to be a lot though, just because there aren't many platforms that are this unique and us as individuals, we have a lot going on, period. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's just two of us for now. Only two. Yeah. <laughs> Only two of us. Yeah. I completely, completely agree with that. And I mean, it's not even just from, you know, people wanting to talk to us, but it's like work that we are doing to make a difference in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, actually putting some action to some of the things that we've been, like, we dreamt about, but now we're actually doing it. So, um, let's see. One of the things um, that came out recently was the diversity plan with USEF. Mm -hmm. um, we were involved in the external thought leaders group. And we had several sessions where we talked about the concerns, talked about the solutions, and talked about how USEF can make that happen. Um, a lot of people, once the plan came out, were like super skept skeptical, like, oh my God, what are, are they really going to do something? They were really, really, really. And from the inside, I mean, inner side you know we're more inside than the rest of the world but we're not like in inside i feel like they're really gonna um try to make some strides to do the right thing um it could change but for now i feel like they're headed in the right direction in that standpoint in the diversity equity and inclusion standpoint yeah so, um, yeah, I mean, that was a cool project to, to be involved in, honestly, you know, getting to talk to, um, you know, different leaders in the, in that part of the industry. Yeah, and them taking into consideration everything that everyone was saying, you know, it wasn't just a one-time thing. We didn't like meet with them for one phone call and say, okay, y'all need to do this. No, we were meeting. <laughs> um, and it wasn't just us. There were other people. Well, if you have read, you would see who was also in that group. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's the, that's the, the, how everything starts. If you had read, yeah, <laughs> then you would see. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. <laughs> But I, I was real happy just to see that it wasn't like, okay, we're going to talk to these people and this seems like a great idea. And then that was it. They actually, you know, did something when it came to putting together that, that diversity um, and inclusion part of it, which I hope other organizations take that in, in, into consideration. You know, that is sad, kind of, I guess that it has to be something that has to be implemented, but if it's needed, then it's needed. Yeah. And they out here like hiring people to help them. Right. Like, <laughs> they like pro diversity professionals to orchestrate this plan and put it together. Like yeah, that's how that serious. Cool too. I was like, oh, okay, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how serious it, it was. There it is to them. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plan is implemented and following up with them and saying, you know, these are the words of the people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exciting. So that was fun. That was fun. Um, what else happened? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> It's hard, y'all. It's hard to separate the things that are happening because everything that we do surrounds horses. It has to do with horses. Yeah, it's, all, it's all intermingled, intermixed. One person can talk about 
you know, be introduced to us through YBE and then they want help on their business. So they are trying to get in with Black Unicorn Creative or they are, you know, someone I know personally and they want to get involved with Saddle Up and Read. Like, it's just everything. So just intertwined. We also started Black Equestrian Network. (laughs) So they're like, have you heard about this? (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah so i i mean cats out the bag um because i just realized in our latest magazine feature that we did actually uh talk about it but um we are the creators of the black equestrian network and it's a resource have we talked about this before maybe we just mentioned it maybe we didn't tell people we created it but <laughs> Surprise, we created that. <laughs> You're welcome. So the What's Black Equestrian, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the Black Equestrian Network is um is a resource, it's a map, and you can list your business on the map if you are a black owned business. Mm-hmm. And um it's it acts as like a modern day green book it helps promote and highlight black businesses in the horse industry we know that historically black people are economically disenfranchised and this is just one of the ways we can make it so that you know if someone wants to support them specifically they can figure out exactly where they are and how to support them. They can, you know, there are people out there looking for barns to take lessons. And if you are a professional trainer and you're traveling around and you can do lessons here and here and there, you know, make that known. Add yourself, you know, fill out the form and join the network. It's free. Um, Be descriptive in your description of your business. Don't just put a uh, one word or one sentence talk about what it is that you do like your pitch and if you need help making a pitch then hit up black unicorn creative <laughs> yes yes this is something i was gonna discuss on black unicorn creative at some point but honestly i am so so tired of black businesses not taking themselves seriously like how do you how do you expect someone else to take you seriously if you don't take yourself seriously like in in the free maybe maybe we should charge for it and that'll make people take themselves seriously but but we don't want to do that but in the opportunity every opportunity that you have to promote yourself you do it a hundred percent we don't want 50% of you and to expect people to want to find you and patronize your business if you've only you're only willing to give 50% of yourself. Like that just just kills me. Like it took a it took a while for Black Unicorn Creative to figure out exactly what it was exactly the purpose to to get it down to one sentence, but I did it. And every time someone asks, I say exactly what I do. And that way there's no, there's no question. Um, And that if they want to patronize my business, they have full opportunity. Saddle up and read. There's no confusion to what it does. You know, so if you provide horse, that's the other thing you don't have to provide all the services. Like nobody's gonna take you seriously. If you say you are a horse trainer, you provide board, you do farrier work, and you do birthday parties. Like what? What is it that you really do? What are you actually good at? Right. Cause you can know how to do a lot of things, but we cannot be, you know, 100% good at everything. We just can't. That's that's no. just not how humans work it's no not. and it's okay it, yeah it's, it's okay. perfectly fine it's perfectly fine and that comes from someone who is good at a lot of shit sorry <laughs> i don't know my bad 
um, like it's okay to, you know, have your business be focused on one thing. It's perfectly fine. Um, but please, 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 yes, when you are submitting information to the Black Equestrian Network, please be descriptive and say exactly what you mean, say what you do, say something that you would say to the white folk, basically, to, to keep it 100% candid, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people think it's less serious when they're dealing with Black businesses. But when it comes to me and Caitlin, we're going to check. We got whole expectations out here. And that's, I think, one of the things that we have gained over this time that we've been doing this podcast. We have expectations of people at this point. Because one, one because I know what the possibilities are. Two, because I know not everybody can come. Mm -hmm. So be about it. Like I'm I'm talking directly to black owned businesses. Be a hundred percent about it. We are we are here to be a resource and to bring as many people with us as we can. Like that is that's the goal. Right. But we're not taking any slackers. We're not taking people who are confused. We're not, if you want help. By all means, shoot us a message and we'll we'll do our best because we get a lot of messages. But um do you, if you want to come with us, you gotta be yeah, you gotta be on it. You gotta be on it. Take yourself seriously. Cause for a long time we didn't take ourselves seriously. We didn't think this podcast was like that big of a resource, like we're just out here talking and da 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 until we're starting to get messages from Ireland and the UK and Bermuda talking about how much of an impact this has made. Like this thing is inter international and is literally causing people in rooms that we didn't know exist to reach out to us for feedback. Right. So now like we take our time and our energy so seriously because we could be out here all willy-nilly not taking it seriously and not trying to promote ourselves not trying to do anything for the industry and out here like just doing random performances and pretending like like a question here ta-da or we could be out here actually doing stuff for the industry to actually push our original mission right so right and you just never know when that door is going to open you either going to be ready or you're going to get left <laughs> okay um, yeah okay you go to add your business while you're planning your business now so you can add it in the future you have to think long term mm -hmm. you don't know it's people out here oops People are out here, organizations and businesses are wanting to support us. And they're going to look and they're going to be like, okay, well, do you have an official website? They're going to look at your email. Does it just say at Gmail? Or does it say at, you know, like your business.com, dot org, whatever it is. They are looking at that stuff. And you don't want to be listen. looking at that stuff. Right. <laughs> I'll be looking at it. I'm like, well, what? You know, and Change everything that says at Gmail. <laughs> yeah. And my thing is, you know, we know it's hard. We know it's hard. If you don't have the resources at that moment to have a website, you at least have a Facebook page. That's free. Mm -hmm. You know, have something that says what you do, what your services are, how people can get in contact with you. Like something. Something. You, Some people didn't put a single website for their submission. And it's just like, okay. Um, so we're just going to take your word for it that you do what you say you do. And like, instead of like me calling you like, hello, this is Gary. Oh, hey, I heard that you do lessons. Oh, yeah, 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 I do. Like, w we want to promote businesses that we know are serious. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are going to contribute to the economic growth of Black America, the Black horse industry. Like, 
not people who just want to be out here all willy-nilly like not doing things the right way right okay <laughs> I, I hope y'all get it by now right right I just wanted to say one more thing mm -hmm. um to our non-black allies stop submitting your businesses I don't care if you cater to black people I don't care if you took pictures of black people. I don't care if you got black clients. You are not a black owned business. The mission is clear. This that space is not for you. I if you need help finding free listings for businesses, I do have resources. Reach out to me. But the Black Equestrian Network is not for that. Okay, now we can move on. Use that for the promo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even go like, what are they talking about? <laughs> They're like, oh Lord, let me let me listen to this episode because they go in. They go in. Right. <laughs> it's Sometimes, a wild episode because you watch the promo with the T, you ain't right. <laughs> right, right. You only here for the drama. Don't be here for us when there's no drama, okay? <laughs> Um, okay, before we go on, on a tangent, yeah, you, mentioned, you mentioned that Black Equestrian Network was in a magazine, and we've been in a few magazines. <laughs> oh my gosh. How cool is that? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, print. Like, anybody in the world could get it. I have both of them right now. <laughs> show girl, show girl. Did y'all see that? In there, in there, whole pages, whole pictures, Ooh, pictures we took on a cell phone, right? And they still came out cute. Yeah. Shout out to Amaris for taking the photos, right? Appreciate you, girl. This is new. Mm -hmm. That came out this week. Attention. I'm not gonna show you the inside because it's beautiful, and you need to get one. Well, the pre-orders in today. Oh yeah, let's see. You know what? You know, so I think you can show the people to get one for volume one. Um, all in all, her horse girls. Who that? Who that? Us. We got a whole like one, two, three, four, five. Whole five page spread. This is beautiful. Um, this entire. This entire uh, of art, <laughs> yeah, book. It's a magazine, but it's more like a coffee table magazine. Like the sheer quality of the book, it's not like it's not like a magazine that you find in the store. It's like a real, you know, it's got it's heavy, heavy paper. Like it's a quality magazine, and I really, really want to shout out Emmy for uh, producing something of this quality because this is not so like something I've ever seen before. No, and I love it. Like I'm like, oh my goodness! Could you imagine, you know, just growing up as a, a as a horse girl, and you just like, and you really? would have had something like this. Like when I was looking through it, I was just thinking about how many other young girls this would probably catch their eye. Um, but I, I really like that. I like yeah. that. It seems like a team effort, you know. Um, and I, I'm glad that she included us in the first volume. Like, she didn't have to do that. There are so many publications out here that revolve around horses, and y'all can flip through them, and you know who we, exactly you want to see. You're not going to see nobody that looks like us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they included us and other Black equestrians and equestrians of color. They didn't have to do that. Right. So shout out to people with, you know, real action, action steps. Out <laughs> about, about it. <laughs> um I do want to say um the I, I just want to read the header underneath our name um mm -hmm. because I think there's just like different kind of content we've been putting out some of the things that we have written ourselves but sometimes y'all people just ask us to have conversations and then they write 
from our conversation. So when we see it, like sometimes they don't send it to us first. We just have a conversation and then they publish it and it's like, wow, oh yeah, we did talk about that. But it's like our first time seeing it just like with everybody else. So, and that's how this book was. We have no idea that this is gonna be this amazing. Um, but seeing things that people have written about us, like touches my heart because you don't know how you're putting yourself out to the world until you get that mirror back to you. So it says, these women are fearless. Together, they co-host their successful podcast, Young Black Equestrians. They are committed to doing good and doing a lot of it. They filled me in on the trail riding scene and how that shaped their experience as Black equestrians. They also talked about how to create change without making it difficult. So, yeah. That's five, five pages of just our story. I haven't even had, like I've glanced through this, but I haven't had time to just like, every, accomplishment haven't had time to just celebrate them mm -hmm. you know like because there's so much happening and it doesn't mean I appreciate any list it's just there's so much happening and I'm I'm extremely thankful for for all of this um wow like you just reading that out loud <laughs> oh my goodness she said that about us <laughs> And stuff like that only happens when you're doing something. Yeah. People want to talk about like, how do you get these features and how do you make an impact and how do you, and this is what I talk about in my business also, like nobody wants to talk to somebody without a story. Like you got to have a purpose. You got to have a story. You got to have like, talk about something. Yeah, out here not talking about nothing and then wonder why people don't want to interview you. <laughs> like, people want to know that you're an expert in something. Like, talk about something. That didn't apply to nobody you talk to. <laughs> they could be like, how this girl blast me? I'll just get him. If it applies to you, then you need to change your life. I was about to say, <laughs> hit dogs a holla. If the shoe fits, walk it out. Shoot. Oh, boy. Um... I should have had some water beside me. <laughs> Girl, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I had to learn. I had to learn. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I don't know what to say. Like, this is all so exciting. We haven't done a solo episode in so long. <laughs> I'm rested. I hope I was gonna say, I hope y'all not bored just because of us. Like, I hope y'all just love us. Right, please. Because of us, please. <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh, we were going to talk about diversity panels as a whole or the thing that just happened? How long have we been? <laughs> Whatever's lay on our spirit. Well, I don't know how to, I have two questions. It could segue or it could be the end. Okay. Okay. You can do, just do your question. They're for you, obviously. <laughs> Um, why do you think people are organizing these panels? To make it seem like they have something to talk about and make it seem like they acknowledge the problem. But as we have shared in previous episodes, I feel like <laughs> I was going to do the thing like we do on um, stories where it gets close to the mouth. <laughs> like, how do I make that happen here? <laughs> We're tired of talking about the problem. I put a promo too. <laughs> if we, we are not talking about solutions. No. We're not. We're not. And if you are listening to this, Jesus Christ almighty, please, if you're going to put together a panel, make it a solutions panel. Right. Please. Wait, because that's, at this point, that's what people want to know. 
what is it that they can do to make that happen? Because every time we're on one and we look in the chat and then people are agreeing and then they're asking questions, but like you said, the questions go back to, okay, well, what do we do? Like people want to know, okay, well, after this is over, what do we do next? <laughs> Action steps. What is next? It is November. We've been talking about the same problem since March, April. And how many organizations who put out a statement have done something other than send a pair of jeans or some helmets to these black equestrians out here? Are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> I just want everyone to know. I feel like they know, but I just want to say it out loud that if you listen to this podcast, you know that we're going to be real. I, I, I just want to make sure that you know that um, we are just here for honesty because there's not enough of it. Um, we're here for accountability because there's not en enough of it. And yes, we have made friends in this industry, um, but our mission is what it is. And so when we see things that are that are not aligned with that, or I'm not saying everybody has to be doing the same thing, but if you say that you like resonate with a particular mission, but your actions don't follow it, um, don't expect for no one to say anything about it. I just want to put that disclaimer out there. So as we are, you know, connecting with companies and you know, connecting with, the, that's what I was talking about earlier. Like the, our level of clarity and discernment at this point has gotten so high that if in, since March, if you literally have not found it in your budget, in your capabilities to act on the advocacy that you say that you have, don't expect nobody to say anything about it right because it doesn't have to be difficult <laughs> it's not difficult right it's not it's not um it's really not because i feel like we can make a list and we could like check off who did something you know past the, the black square and past making the statement or post or for that week highlight any equestrians um that aren't on your feed already and they should be because we're all still equestrians <laughs> you know like y'all gotta do better um and then my follow-up question is how can we measure well how can they measure success like, at what point can they say, okay, well, we said we would do this, we did it, and the outcome was blah, blah, blah. Like allies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I know it's kind of hard for people to understand, but... Um, the world doesn't revolve around horses. Um, I think that companies, allies, anyone who is really trying to make a push for change needs to look at their lives outside of the horse industry and say how excuse me, how am I as a person changed because of the things that I have put in place? You know, if you, you got your company out, out here highlighting black equestrians and putting them all over your social media, yet you still clutch your pearls and grab your purse when you pl pass a black person on the sidewalk, you have done nothing. Right, the, the black equestrians 
aren't the only ones <laughs> you know they're not we aren't the only black people <laughs> yeah and it's just like people at like like i saw a story in the group in one of the groups on facebook about someone who was at a horse show and she was like oh shoot i blew it with the black girl and the person she was talking to was like oh well did you say hey to her she was like no what did you wave or did you smile no did you so what'd you do i just i just looked at her okay well that's the thing that we asked y'all not to do anymore right like who wants to just be looked at who wants to be stared at nobody not us we don't it is not rocket science to be a good person and that does not mean you're only a good person at a horse show right be a good person at the grocery store yes be a good person in your college classes like it's yeah it's like we are asking for a red carpet to roll out and applause every time we show up no we just want to be treated like regular people exactly so you don't stare at regular people unless something is unless they're doing something crazy (laughs) right we're not doing anything crazy by being black i went to appaloosa world show a couple weeks ago and oh yeah you went to that yeah like so much stuff (laughs) yeah yeah um i made i made a point to you know if you're gonna look at me hey how you doing Mm -hmm. you know what's up hey hey come out your mouth yeah like what's up what you need hey how you doing you know and yeah they had black staffers working there i made a point to make sure i said good morning to them when i saw them how you doing yeah i know these white people got you out here cleaning their stalls because they didn't bring help or for whatever reason they just don't want to do it themselves how you doing you doing good today no i can dump my own manure i know that other people dumped it right here outside of the manure thing but i can dump it myself it's not a big deal you got enough to worry about you know just be a good person damn i just feel like is people think that there's like some secret sauce and there's no secret sauce we want you to be better people outside of uh, outside of the horse industry. Where does that even stem from? Like, when I think it stems about- from slavery. Everything stems yeah. from slavery. That <laughs> when I just think about like people, you know, the example you just gave, and at these shows, and not just doing that. It's not even an extra step, but not just um, being. Uh, oh goodness not being courteous enough it's the elitism yeah it's the elitism that horse people like is this y'all's is this does this trace back to your family does it trace back to your trainers because if it traces back to your trainers yeah i don't know i i think it's just the elitism that is the horse industry that doesn't care about the people that are on the bottom and then the people on the top ask us how we can be prom- pr- how can we promote how can we do it okay well the suggestion is to help the people on the bottom right and then they basically say okay what else no there is nothing else nothing else you're like that's <laughs> there's nothing else but yeah i don't know there's it's not complex. Maybe people are looking for this to be like complex. Like there has to be something that we can change. And it's like, guys, we're telling you what you can change. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think, I don't think that they want it to be complex. I think they people want an easy answer, an easy, safe, something they can do and remain at the top. Something they can do that will not inconvenience their lives too much. Maybe just a little bit little extra effort maybe a couple grand but they don't want something that's going to cause structural change or something that will cause them to have to change their daily lives and that's the problem Mm. y'all get let that marinate it's it's 2020 we're not having these conversations. And- what? What the? What the? 
Look, look. I'm about to be extra. Hold on. I know it paid you about to flip deep. <laughs> 2020 <laughs> tried to buck us off. But we some bad mother buckers out here, okay? Please put that on the shirt. And do not message us in 2021 asking if we want to be on a diversity panel. I'm telling y'all now, the answer is no. The answer is no. Y'all don't need no more diversity panels. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't need us to suggest no more solutions. You implement what it is that we've said, and once you've done that, and you've done it well, come back to us. <laughs> um, and then we can move on from there, but do not. Mm -mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Because yeah. I'm gonna respond, no. <laughs> and that's gonna be it. <laughs> it's not gonna be no explanation. It's not gonna be no hello, no salutations. It's just gonna be no. And I just wanna say, like, we've honestly, like, I've honestly been disappointed. Right, like, why are y'all not showing up and showing out? Like, black people are out here and we are like, okay, we just, like, it really sucks that there are barriers that some of us are trying to get over, but there are some people who are out here and they're working their butts off and they just need, they just need that door open. And I'm, I'm sorry that, that that's how it is for some people that, you know, we do have to wait on a door to be open for those resources to be released. Um, but these people... Y'all got y'all are like holding up on the door <laughs> and just refusing to open it. Yeah. 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 I just, you know, it's like the places that when we first started, we were like, oh my gosh, we've got to get on this platform. I'm like, this has got to be. It's like I mean, I'm appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm not trying to be unappreciative, but it's just not what what we thought it was it's not like you know you look around and you think that these people are untouchable and it's just like wow like you know I would love to be able to get in a room with them I would love to be able to and then sometimes it's disappointing honestly it is like some of your favorite idols are just not who you thought they were or who you who they say they are or whatever and it's it's a realization that we had to have um so I know <laughs> um yeah. yeah so I'm excited about change mm -hmm. and I know that some barns some places are still trying to figure out you know how to get some diversity how to get black people and people of color into their programs and stuff like that is going to take some time because it does depend on demographics mm -hmm. like you can't just say all right we're gonna include these people and they're not even there <laughs> you know right. i was like we want more black people at the barn girl you don't live around no black people no <laughs> oh like, that's why they're not there because right. they don't even live near you <laughs> <laughs> right so some of y'all is not gonna happen um but when they do come up y'all better be prepared you know yeah. like don't let it be a culture shock yeah um, and have conversations with your people like you know if you don't have the caliber of people around you that are are ready to make that change then don't be confused when the change isn't made you know if you yeah like say hey we want to make this a particular environment are you with it or no mm -hmm. i'm excited for the future <laughs> i am too i am too and i just i'm just ready to get this tv show mm -hmm. yeah yeah whoever gave us this this TV show, we need um, an RV, you know, because the dogs got to come with us. They yeah. Like <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just yeah. don't want me. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. We do know. 
It's going to be fantastic. Year I know. Of- well, yeah, we, we do know that. But I'm just, I'm still stuck on like, you know, what I was ranting about and like. When they're getting it together, they're going to get it together. They have to. They have no choice. Like, you're not going to have a horse industry. You're not going to have a business um, without people of color and black people. Yeah. Like, white equestrians are not the only equestrians in the world. And neither are only competitive equestrians, the no. people of the world. Like, because what happens if all, you know, grooms or um, some of these trainers who are of color that y'all don't talk about um, and other people who have these positions that nobody really wants to do because they rather compete? What are you going to do when they say, okay, well, we demand this? Like, you have to listen to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, but everybody doesn't compete. We don't compete, and we here. Mm-hmm. We out you. It's people that work with horses that don't even ride horses, but they work with horses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, thank you for coming to our TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> talks with two people or are they I don't know, but we could do one we That's should fine. we should do one we should we do should one do okay it. we we're gonna write that on our goals list head talk head talk because i doubt anyone has done one on horses i have to find right one. we're gonna do that but we need to do that so, yeah. <laughs> all right are you ready for the derby round? Woo! <laughs> Hold on, let me find the list. Oh, here it is. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> the derby round is where we ask, or I'm going to just ask Caitlin a bunch of questions really quickly, and she has to choose one answer or the other. All right, mm-hmm. here we go. English or Western? Western. Solids or spot? Solids. Bays or grays? Bays. <laughs> Brown tack or black tack? Black tack. Sponge or curry brush? Give me the curry brush. Shod or barefoot? Barefoot. Bumper pull or gooseneck? Girl, that gooseneck. <laughs> I've been whipping that truck and trailer. <laughs> you better. Uh, rope halter or nylon halter? Rope halter. Wood fence or electric fence? Wood. What is your favorite piece of barn equipment? Um, I don't know the... <laughs> Somebody said this. The pooper scooper. That's my favorite. It's um, what is your favorite piece of tack? Lee ropes. <laughs> when was the last time you fell off? Uh, two years ago. Two years. Three years ago. Three years ago. And if money was no object, what is one horse-related thing you would purchase? Buying a farm off trip. <laughs> That's what's <horse> related. <laughs> All right, we'll do it the other way around on our next solo episode. Yeah. Right. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, thank y'all for tuning into this episode. We're gonna be back next week with another solo episode because we got believe it or not. Huh? <laughs> I said we got something to talk about. I was about to say, believe it or not, we got other stuff to talk about. We made a list and made sure that we did not talk about these things this time. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Follow the show already. Like, why y'all playing? I know. Y'all know y'all want to see all of this. All of this. <laughs> not just here up. Okay? <laughs> but anyway. All right. Well, we will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Oh, get it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Young Black Equestrians. 
head over to our Facebook or Instagram pages and let us know what you thought about that episode. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and have the opportunity to be featured in our next episode. See you next week.